share your grief for the loss of Kolun and Urok. I did not know them long, but their fire burned bright enough to illuminate even a shadow warrior such as I. They were prepared to fight. Unfortunately, preparing for loss does not always come so easily. How many more must die? How many have already been sacrificed? Kaas, Adun, Jabok, Argus, Tassadar? And Kaldarus. Kaldarus? Long ago, Judicator, I was once a zealot of your people. It was in that glorious time of peace and tranquility that I knew Kaldarus and studied with him the ancient teachings. It is to him that I owe my enlightenment, my departure from tradition. Like those he followed and those who followed him, he saw the freedom of mind and spirit and was murdered for it by his own mentor, Tyradun. Tyradun? One and the same. I can scarcely believe it. Believe it, Judicator. My predecessor, Loriok, witnessed the event with his own eyes. Nanoth, Tyradun, and Loriok were Templar under the leadership of Jabok. As pupils of the Templar, Dolores, myself, and the brave Sinar waged war against the mad armies of a rogue Judicator, obsessed with the forbidden secrets of Zalnagan technologies. And who was this Judicator? Severak. His name is seldom spoken. It was forbidden to record it in the archives. Such was his evil. Only Loriok kept a personal account of his doings. The tome rests in my custody now. Even I do not dare open it. The thirst for knowledge does not denote evil intent. Judicator, you hardly knew my contemporaries. Ah, where have I heard that before? Imagine the fields of iron, soaked in the blood and dismembered limbs of your own people. A glimpse into the foul blasphemy of his evil. No, Moloch. Even that would not be a glimpse. I believe I understand, but what became of this Severak, and what relation does it bear to Tyradun and the death of your friend Kaldarus? Alongside our Templar masters, Kaldarus, Sinar, and I fought against Severak and his twisted minions. Their forces were legion, but we stood firm. It was in the darkest hour of our struggle that Tyradun betrayed us to Severak. Our losses were great, and Kaldaris fell by Tyradun's own hand. Only Nanoth's interference saved Tyradun from Japok's fury and my own blades. He sacrificed himself by forcing emerging. He and Tyradun became one. Nanoth's will was strong enough to carry out the assassination of Savarak, for which we all owe him a great debt. But, in time, Tyradun's will once again grew dominant. Jabok could not bring himself to destroy his old friend Nanoth, and so sealed the Archive alive in a nondescript temple far from the comings and goings of others. After that day, I and Loriok spoke truthfully of the incident to our people. The Assembly branded us as heretics for blaspheming against the Archon's memory and calling Jabok a liar. We were exiled. According to Loriok's journal, Nanoth Tyradun had never been seen or heard from again. That is, until you encountered him at the Temple of Jopak. May its ruins rest in peace. Hmm, I understand your doubts, Moloch, but for once, I have little to say. I must think on this. I must think on this at great length. Entaro Adun. Entaro Adun. Was it proper to burden him with this? Perhaps not, but it was necessary. Dramalus is wise, but his is not a questioning soul. Perhaps this may open his eyes. Or perhaps it may close them forever. I must regretfully inform you that the Judicator does not wish to be disturbed. 
What is it, Gwion? I'm receiving a transmission from a ship in orbit. A Terran ship. Terran? Yes. Wait, there is more. No, he has retired to the Executor's Citadel and does not wish to be disturbed. Tell him it's about Mox. A transmission regarding Commander Mox? It is merely a single Terran in orbit, Judicator. I was about to dismiss him. No, thank you. Pass the signal through to me here. As you wish. Speak, Terran. You don't know me. The name's Aster. Trent Aster. Or you can call me Trench if you like. I have no time for idle chat nor long introductions. You mentioned Commander Mox. Do you bring news of his current status? You could say that. I'm an information broker and I was recently hired by the Commander. And I've, uh, recently discovered something... interesting. Normally I just finish the job, collect my dues, and move on to the next thing, but, uh, in the light of this information, I can't exactly return to my employer. Oh? Explain. I take it you know about Mox's exile? I was present, yes. I know who planted the homing beacon in Mox's quarters. Indeed. Do tell. 50,000 credits first. Terran, if your information is of any use to me, you may be paid. If not, I may very well blow you out of the sky for wasting my time. Fair enough. The person who planted that homing beacon wasn't Mox. It was Dale Gurney. And that's not even the interesting part. Those weren't Kelmorian wraiths attacking the station. Elaborate. Those wraiths were using fake serial numbers and transponder codes, flying around all painted up to look like Combine ships. Check your old data and you'll see that the masked signatures are specific to the troops on Mount Midnight, the old Char Sai Reserve under jurisdiction of the Combine. I do not recall seeing a substantial air force of any kind at the Commander's former base. You're saying the wraiths that attacked him belonged to the Brisbane Contingent. For what purpose would they attack themselves? Well, I managed to get my hands on a transmission between Gurney and Kelmorian officer. But from the conversation, it turns out that the officer was just someone under Gurney's command. That wraith squadron's instructions were to pose as Kelmorian pilots, attack the station, set the ships on autopilot, and eject for pickup by the other officers conveniently on leave. That set the stage for the bug to be found, and Mox to get kicked off. Does this not sound a bit contrived to you, Terran? What is the point of staging this elaborate charade just to exile Commander Mox? Ah, but that's where this little conspiracy gets good. There are a few inconsistencies here that you just can't ignore. Now didn't Mox tell you that the Combine was planning to use an army of psionically controlled Zerg against the Dominion? Yes. Yeah, well, what he failed to mention was that the Combine is actually a part of the Dominion itself now. It'd be pretty stupid for the Kelmorians to want revenge over monetary losses when the Dominion Engineering Corps is actually a subsidiary of the Combine itself. And that's just one example off the top of my head. The Combine hasn't suffered on account of Menk's rising to power. It's gotten richer. So the Commander's information was mistaken? Not quite. Isn't it also a coincidence that the two of them happen to be training ghosts only a stone's throw away from an old, supposedly abandoned Morian mining base? that coincidentally happened to house a platoon of telepaths in cold storage and a psi emitter capable of luring all the Zerg on char to any planet like flies to flypaper? You are saying Commander Mox and his forces wanted to use the psionic technology themselves and that he purposely lied to us in order to obtain it? Now you're starting to get the picture. And what of the Kelmorian troops who assaulted us shortly before the psy cocoon was destroyed? Commander Mox himself assisted my forces in dispatching them. And I suppose those were imposters too. No, those were the real deal. Obviously, from all the gear at Mount Midnight, the real Combine was into psionic experimentation. The Dominion Engineering Corps ain't just a bunch of bridge builders and civil engineers. 
Somehow, Gurney and Mox got wind that the Combine was experimenting with the Zergon Iron. All that bull about a plot to overthrow Minsk and keep the Protoss occupied? That was pure fabrication. The Psychicoon on Iyer was another of the Combine's experiments, and the Kelmorian forces that arrived to harass you were just there to try to preserve their investment. Mox and Gurney planned to take out the Combine, grab whatever technology that was used to create the cocoon, and return safely to a shiny new space station waiting in orbit over Iyer. The most heavily infested world in the Kopralu sector. You don't actually think the two of them and their ragtag group of yokels could actually help defend your province from the rest of the Zerg rampaging over the rest of the planet, do you? Continue. Now, the short and the long of it is that your Terran buddies wanted to use the Zerg much in the same way that the fictional Combine wanted to. Except they had no intention of striking at Korhal, oh no. From what I read in their classified files, they wanted to pose as Combine agents, hold small Dominion border worlds for ransom, and make a way like billionaires. The real Combine would take the blame and get wiped out by Dominion forces, allowing Mox and Gurney to get a foothold in the mining industry to boot. And what of Mox's banishment? Gurney simply got too greedy. Mox was never told the full extent of Gurney's plans, especially the part about disguising themselves as the Combine. He was just a loose end to get rid of, and they couldn't just whack him and his loyal followers without arousing too much suspicion from his new Protoss buddies. Us. You got it, Chief. Gurney did not strike me as being the insidious and calculating leader you make him out to be. He seemed far too quiet and reserved to be the mastermind of such a grandiose scheme. I hate to be trite, but it's always the quiet ones you have to watch out for. You'd be surprised at how many idiots there are in this galaxy that attempt crazy things like this on a daily basis. And more surprised as to how many actually get away with it. Surprise? Nothing has surprised me in a long, long time. But... I am now at a point in my life where I would actually have to agree. So, what do you plan to do? What can I do? My own people are mired in deceit and treachery. Look, if you were bent on stopping a whole division of the Terran bureaucracy from annihilating the Terran throne world before, I don't see any reason why you can't stop a couple of charlatans from ruining the lives of half a billion people on half a dozen defenseless worlds now. It's all in the day's work. <clears throat> right? I... am... not so certain anymore, Terran. My homeworld is in ashes, infested by Zerg. Two of my closest companions are dead, and others, others that I have respected and believed in with every ounce of my being, may be frauds and traitors. Not to be Mr. Insensitive or anything, but I'm picking up a lot of Protoss movement all of a sudden, heading for your position. And what of it? There is much to be done here. It is not unusual that there would be heightened activity among my people. Yeah, well, these Protoss are coming from the underground tunnel surrounding your city. I kind of thought you guys were surface dwellers. Forgive me for interrupting, Judicator, but did I hear that correctly? Moloch, I have just received word. Several Corsairs in your personal squadron have been shot down by Dracoons and Templar emerging from the caverns. They are coming. Forgive me, Terran, if I do not jump at the chance to right every wrong your cohorts have perpetrated. I simply do not have the energy. Leave, or you may inadvertently stumble into the thick of a war you are unprepared to face. Alright, fine. I can see that nothing I've said has meant anything to you. But I still expect those credits to be delivered. Go. Now! Have fun. Judicator, our attackers are nearly upon us. Let them come. I am tired of fleeing. We will defend this city to the death. Be it Protoss, Zerg, Terran, or any other. We will not retreat. And we will not surrender. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
Judicator, it appears that we have no Templar or Arbiters with which to combat the enemy. According to the local reports, Alderas has called a legion away from here for some sort of meeting. Leaving us, as usual, to fend for ourselves. Never mind that now. Are your dark Templar forces ready to stand with us? We are at your disposal. Then they will do just as well. Do not underestimate us, Judicator. We are the powers even you do not suspect. They may prove useful, Judicator, for it appears we also have Zerg company. My life for ire, I have returned. Your warriors have engaged the enemy. I have returned. Our pylon is under attack. Upgrade complete. Come on. 
Yes. Safe for now. <laughs> 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 